Welcome to the Co-Creative Sessions, your access point for knowledge and expertise from artists, creatives, change makers, designers, entrepreneurs, and community enthusiasts in the South Coast and beyond. Whether you know it or not, your environment does play a big role in your work. I'd recommend anytime you find something that's really effective, break it down. The idea is to get started today. Avoid overthinking it. The Co-Creative Sessions is funded by Mass Development TDI and the Bar Foundation as part of the TDI Creative Cities Initiative to boost arts-based economic development. This program is also supported in part by a grant from the New Bedford and Dartmouth Local Cultural Councils, local agencies which are supported by the Mass Cultural Council, a state agency. And now, the Co-Creative Sessions. Welcome to the Co-Creative Sessions. I'm Scott Bishop. The following workshop was recorded in person at the Co-Creative Center in June of 2022. Anne-Marie Gillette began her art career with a bachelor's in art education from Rhode Island College. She continued her postgraduate studies in painting, ceramics, and printmaking at Rhode Island School of Design, Bennington College, and Massachusetts School of Art and Design. After doing freelance illustration and operating a one-woman textile business, Softworks, she became a visual arts teacher and department head at the Wheeler School in Providence, Rhode Island, for much of her professional life. Anne-Marie also taught adult students in the Brown University MAT program for 10 years. She's returned to her studio practice full-time and has won awards and exhibited her work in both group and solo shows in numerous galleries throughout New England. Her most recent award was first prize for the juried Providence Gallery Night exhibition with her work used for the cover of its yearly brochure. She's an active member of several art groups, including 19 on Paper, Seekonk Artist Network, and the Pawtucket Arts Collaborative. She also has been appointed to the Seekonk Arts Council because of her lifelong involvement in the arts. In this workshop, Anne-Marie guided the group through the transformative process of painting and collage-based work, and finishes by demonstrating how she creates the painted and patterned shapes she uses in her work. I'm here to show you my work and show you how it's developed over the years, because it began with a gourd, um, which might seem a little odd. Most people, when they work with tape, they just take tape and work with it, you know, like they have colored, you know, tape, and they do murals and whatever. But I paint tape, and then I use that painted tape as basically my palette. Um, and so, you know, I'll show you how that's all the painted tape, and I'll show you how to make it, and how I integrate it into um, the work that I do. A lot of people, when they look at my work, uh, especially lately, if I found in an exhibit, I, I get a big kick out of it. They'll walk up to the work and they get closer and closer and closer and they just stare at it. And I know what they're doing. They're trying to figure out what are they looking at. You know, am I looking at a painting? Am I looking at a collage? Am I, what am I looking at? And usually I'll go over and I'll explain, well, what you're looking at is a, a combination of all those things. Um, but that didn't just happen out of nowhere. It started with about 15 years ago. I lived um, on a farm in Vermont. And I had a very, very large garden. I never food, but I also grew hard shells of gourds. And they're not like the gourds that you get, you know, farmer's markets with the lumpy, bumpy, colorful gourds that people buy in the fall. Um, hard shell gourds are a different species. And um, they're used by cultures all over the world. They're used for, you know, practical things to hold grain, to water, water dippers. Uh, musical instruments, sitars are actually made out of bush boards. And I fell in love with them. I loved the shapes. I loved the plants. They bloom at night, beautiful white. I mean, I remember going out on full moon, and my garden would have all these white blossoms everywhere. Uh, and it's just, they're magical. And they're, they're also beautiful in that they're sort of a celadon green when they grow. And I grow all different types. You have snakes and dippers and bushel boards and whatever. And I would grow them and then cure them. And as they cure, they turn into, they, it takes a whole year. You, you cut them, you cure them, you leave them outside. They get disgusting looking. I mean, really, they get mold and you know, black mold grows all over them. But while that's happening, they're drying out in this thing that was you know, a soft gourd turns into essentially wood. And then you have to scrub it. So it's really labor intensive. You have to scrub it you know, with, with all kinds of things. But I took them and I would make vessels and I would make sculptures that were kind of funny because they use all these funny, this was sort of 
part of it's the, the top of the board. And how I would paint it is I was, even before I did the gourds, I was a surface design artist and I did fatiguing, which is where you mask out with wax and dye and wax stuff. So I kind of think that way. I, I was always, my imagery often would grow from masking out things. So that's kind of the way my thought process was. So when you looked at this, and I would be working on all these cords, this would be, these would be, I would, this was painted green. Just try to think. Painted green. And then these were strips of tape. Okay, so all of these little things, this was tape that I wound around. Then I painted over it with that sort of brown. So after that, after it dries, I would pull off the tape. And as I would do that, and I would have lots, I, I worked on lots of boards, that's what I sold essentially. As I would pull off these little things, I would have stick on my leg, you know, I would be pulling and spinning and like spinning. And, um, and I used to just bunch them up and throw them away. And then one day, I looked down, and I had all these different shapes. They're usually geometric shapes, you know, triangles, rectangles, whatever. And I looked at them and I went, you know, maybe I should do something with them. And that was my aha uh moment. -huh. So then what I started doing is working on gourds and then taking paper, and as I would take things off, without planning, I would just begin to just, because they would still retain enough stickiness that they would stay on, they would stick on something. And so I began doing these sort of abstracted kind of things. So this was, this was a small one, but I would work really large. I ended up getting a show of them. I mean, it was, it was really funny, but they would be um, nothing, no, nothing figurative, nothing realistic, but just some geometric designs. But all of these things came from colors that I chose for a board. So it, it, wasn't, it wasn't something that I had, you know, uh, where I said, well, I feel like using blue. Well, uh, no, be whatever I painted. So one day I thought, well, maybe I can be a little more methodical about this. You know, maybe I can just paint the tape. So I began to gather up um, non-stick surfaces. And I actually, in a yard sale, believe it or not, got a huge thing of wide ribbon. And I would cut strips of ribbon, and I would stick the tape on it like this. And then I would begin painting. And I would, you know, have fun with it. So if you look at all of these, you can see that, you know, you can have textures. You can have, um, well, you can check those out later. <laughs> but you can see that, you know, what I would do is I would just paint wide variety, warm colors, cool colors, solid colors, textured colors. and. Um, that would be my palette. So then I started using them in my work. And I am very lucky that I live on 12 acres of land. And it's quite lovely. It's off road. It's very quiet. It has fields. It has a lot of woods. It has a little warm pool. Um, it's just, it's lovely. And, you know, as much as I would love to say I travel all over the world, I don't. Uh, my world is kind of small. Um, and I'm also one of those people that finds uh, utterly fascinated by things that grow and change and morph through the seasons. I mean, I just, I just love it. I, and I spend a lot of time just looking down and staring at things <laughs> I always have. And th that's my subject matter for the most part. Um, so then I began developing Imagery. So I, this is what I mean about it being combinations of things. So this obviously is drawn. This is a wisteria vine that is in uh, in Providence, and it's, I'm in love with this vine. In love, it, it's at a coffee shop that I that I go to very often, and I watch it change through the seasons, and it turn it, it goes from being this incredibly sculptural thing, twisting, you know, gnarly. You know, I, I love gnarly trees. And, um, and then in the spring, I always get something very moving about when all of a sudden this thing that looks dead you know, starts to sprout mm -hmm. into these little tendrils. And then in the summer, of course, it's, it's lush. You know? I haven't done it in the summer because it's mostly foliage. And I'm like, yeah, no, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. But so I draw. And then if you look closely at these when they come up later, you'll see that a lot of it is actually cut and applied um, tape. 
And I've done that with many things. Like this, for example, once we had a book, this is called Brush Pile. Brush Pile was a brush pile you know, in our land. And what, I had uh, a plant of morning books, and it was dead. And so I pulled it up, and I threw it in the brush pile. And about a week later, I noticed in the brush pile, there were morning glories. I, I have no idea how it, it was just, to me, it was miraculous. So that's what it is. So there are a couple of little teeny <laughs> morning glories. And then I love tangles, and I love, you know, sort of the gnarliness of, of growth and um, sort of the chaos. And so when you come up here, all of these lines and all, most of this is um, tape against watercolor background. So, um, and people look at it and they go, how do you cut that? And I, I think, well, after a while, we get very adept at it. You know, if you do something long enough, you become pretty, pretty good at it. So I can cut very, very thin <laughs> tape. And because it's variegated, the lines are variegated. So, I, I mean, you can do things with this tape you can't really do almost any other way. So, you know, when you come up close to some of these, you'll see, for example, like this one. Um, when you look at the red, there it's it's you know three or four different shades of magenta and little teeny 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 uh, stripes. Well, how else would you do that? You know, other than utilizing something like that. So it's, it's become you know an incredible tool for you know doing all types of things. Um, I've just fallen in love with it. And during the pandemic. What started happening was, you know, I had a lot of time to work, a lot of time to experiment. I did a lot of abstractions, um, started working with graphite. I just thought, I've got nothing to lose. Let me just try a lot of different things. But one of the things that I did start doing is working on UPO. And I didn't even know what UPO was. Yeah. But someone said, you know, Amber, you might want to think about working on UPO. It's a really interesting substrate. Um, paint reacts on it very differently than, than paper. And I had been used to working on you know, fairly heavy, heavy duty, you know, Fabriano or Arches. Mm -hmm. So I bought some Yupo and wow, <laughs> I fell in love with Yupo. Um, so then I began, you know, using that as a background and um, it, it gives a different, it's a different quality. There's something about, I use a translucent Yupo and there's something about it that it seems almost like it has an inner glow. I've really, really, really mm -hmm. liked it. Um, I don't know if any of you have used Used it before, but it's a really interesting. It's a really interesting surface, yeah. And yeah. Um, and in this case, um, these are very. It, it, you may have noticed they're getting sort of even more and more intricate. Um, when I look small, I tend to start to get almost hyper focused. <laughs> and this was, um, you know, obviously there are recognizable things in here. So often you'll see recognizable uh, plants, but then sometimes I make them up. <laughs> um, or sometimes I'm just more interested in um, the, sort of the energy or the more the emotional feeling I have when I'm looking at these things. So this was happening in the spring when you know the dandelions were springing up and all of a sudden new growth was starting and there was a lot of you know to me movement and and life that was emerging from the earth and that was what I was trying to capture with this. I also work with. Um, um, markers, the, the acrylic markers, because they work very well on UVO. Um, they stick really well. And I just like the combination of being able to do, you know, some cut work, some uh, work done with the, it, this is a, a true mixed media <laughs> work, as is this. Really? This one, you, um, do you sketch it out first? Like no, and I was just going to say, I, wow. everything just grows. Okay. Um, <laughs> I do a lot of thinking where I have mental images and mm -hmm. I, I think about them and I think about them. Sometimes I dream about them. Mm -hmm. And then I start and sometimes it turns into what I've thought about and sometimes it just goes off in a different direction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, I, I really don't sketch. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. I don't. I don't keep a sketchbook. And I, you know, it's so funny. I have friends who, they're so different in terms of how they operate. You know, they, they do value studies and whatever, and I'm just incredibly intuitive in terms of how I approach my work. Mm -hmm. um, I make decisions constantly, and 
The other thing about tape that's fabulous that you're going to see is that you can change your mind. Mm -hmm. um, you can cut things out, you can lay them down, and I don't care if it's on paper or Yubo or whatever surface, wood, um, if you decide you don't like it, you just pull it up. What kind of tape are you using? I mean, it's, it's artist tape. Oh, I didn't bring the roll. Oh, darn. I don't know what um, yeah, it's, it's, it's basically white, with white it's, artist tape. Yeah, yeah. Um, I get it at Jerry's, and it comes in various widths mm -hmm. from you know a half inch to yeah. three inches. About is about as wide as I've seen it. I haven't seen it in three. Although three mm -hmm. is pretty adequate for getting fairly large shapes. Um, mm -hmm. But that's yeah, that's yeah. that's what it is. I have um, no idea it would take the media so well. It does. It's well, it, you know, if you have the heavy body. Um, Acrylic, you can get a you know fairly thick, uh, you know surface on there and an opaque surface. Mm -hmm. You can also uh, play around sometimes with diluting it, and then it, then it takes very it, as you see it, it will take it very differently. Whereas this is going to be more opaque, right? Mm -hmm. Where I, I I didn't dilute it, so you can get like all these very different types of um, surfaces. You know, if you start, well, when I start doing a demo, you'll we'll see, you can start cutting, and um, if you don't use a shape, or if you decide, oh, I don't like that color next to that color, and yet you have, you know, all these little round shapes, you can just put them right back on there. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's amazing. It stays sticky um, and usable for lots of different movements. Oh, um, interesting. And then after it's done, you might notice that, you know, obviously I seal it. You know, I seal it with an acrylic, um, an acrylic varnish. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, sometimes I use uh, satin, sometimes I use gloss, sometimes I use matte, sometimes I combine them, <laughs> uh, depending on, you know, what I want them to, to look at, to look like, so. Um, do you ever paint over, is tape your last stop, or do you just keep? I have done things where I have put down something in tape and then drawn on. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you can't, yeah, you can't do something. I just posted a work in which the center of um, a flower is, is sort of white with little black speckles, but the flower I based it on had a little rim of yellow, so I took an acrylic marker and I just, I put that in there. Oh, cool. So this, that's why I, I call myself a mixed media artist, because it's, if I have an idea, I just figure out how to make it happen. <laughs> and you know, between the markers and the tape and the acrylics, you know, you can, you, there's a lot of versatility. Yeah, um, seems that way. yeah, a lot of versatility. So, this one was kind of interesting in that um, I started this kind of. It went back to my days of working in uh, batiking because I started it. I'll have to go over here to show you. Where is it? Ah, okay. So this is Yubo, and I, I put some some tape on it. But all of these leaves, all of these, these leaves were tape that I put on Yubo. That, so that's the very first part of it. And all of these the shapes out first. Yes. And then, yep. and then so they, all of these were cut in, in, the, in the white tape. They didn't care about that. <laughs> and then I painted, I painted over it. Mm -hmm. The fun part of this, when you work that way, is that after you paint it, you can then peel that off and use it on something else. So I've actually done works that are sort of like two works, sort of two for the brand so on. I mean, it, it's just, and that was one of those things that just, I thought of how I did that with the gourds, and I thought, well, I can do that with that too. So, um, and then what I did was, so all of this would, you know, picture these being white. Right, yes. And now I painted directly in there, okay. and, you know, and did some drawing. And then most of the tape work on this one is those little teeny flowers and leaves, uh -huh. uh, the sort of grasses, uh -huh. leaves, sticks, and the flowers. So it's a, it's a combination. And, most, and that's what I mean about most people would come up in there, they don't quite know, because you can see the slight relief. You know, and yet paper, yeah, yes. that doesn't usually happen with paper, but the tape is thick enough that, you know, you see that. That's what I mentioned, yeah. yeah. Any more questions about this? If you want to come up and, like, take a closer look, because I think it's, you sort of have to see what's tape and what it's going on.
what I mean about how, you know, it's really kind of fun and versatile, but so now you have this thing, you've got this little sticky thing, and you can use it on something else. So, you know, if you wanted to, and this is what I mean how, so you can, you can apply it, and it just sticks right on there. You don't like it, oh, I don't want it on that, on that space, I'm just going to pick it up and I'm going to stick it somewhere else. And this is great because sometimes I'll put two things together. And I'll say, I, I don't like the way those colors work. I don't, and this is what I mean about being very intuitive. And because I don't have any, you know, very open to change. Um, you can do that with the tape. It's really great. You know, once you start painting on it or drawing on it, it's there. But the, the tape pieces, you can change. And um, for some reason, they just stay sticky. So... Um, and then afterwards, you know, if I've removed all of these, mm -hmm. if I want, then I can go in and start, I can paint in there, I can draw in there, I can then take tape from, let's see, I'll take just so a you could do like a negative image then, couldn't you? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I decide, well, I'm a little this. confused though, you, if you pull off of the tape from the, what you had it on, and you're painting. What what would be what's that white spot on? Is it's, oh, that's paper. Oh, okay. that's that's paper. So you could cut it out and use it some other way, or um, you, can, use or you can work directly right on here. Okay. So that's what I did on there on the Yupo. All of those. I just looked at that and I saw the white, and then I painted it into the white. So you do something like that, and then what did I do? I just added it here. So let's say I decide I'm going to add another another shape to that. And so, you know, you can, so it can vastly change from this, right. because you can add other pieces. And that's what I mean, it's like, you can sort of start to look at this as, you know, a very fluid situation, mm -hmm. where you can make it look like a positive negative, or you can just use it as a starting point, mm -hmm. okay? Once you start playing around with the, with the tape, you just realize it can be a starting point. Or it can be the end point. It can be where all you do is use tape. Like for example, if when you go on my if you go to my Instagram account, I just finished your work today on board. It's on a box board, painted black. It started because I'm going to be in a show in which the artists were given very strict parameters. Everything had to be 16 by 16 on a box board, and it's only um, it's only tape, except for one circle of Yupo that I adhered on there that gives this kind of like amorphous shape and then and then there's uh, all of the tape work. So there's nothing else drawn on there. And, and, it, and it works. It's it's you know not as intricate as that, but that that is what I wanted. So you can just work in tape. You don't have to add anything else. Um, but but that's so if I remove all of that, um, let's see if I can take that off. Now those shapes you cut into that tape? I, cut, I use these little Fiskars. They're titanium non-stick. Uh, they don't stay non-stick forever, believe me. Okay. I mean, no, no. After, you know, after about a week, they start getting a little tacky. <laughs> you, get, you get used to like 
pulling the tape off and sticking it over here. And you'll see when you start working. Like with rubbing it. alcohol on it? No, I don't do anything like that. You don't need anything like that. It's not that sticky. Oh. Um, um, but it, it doesn't stay really slick that mm -hmm. long. It's, I think it's like a Teflon sur surface, mm -hmm. to tell you the truth. Um, but if I can pull this off. This is a tricky shape because it's kind of intricate. I don't want it to break. Those white shapes on there. Yes. How did they get to be that shape? And oh, from what? Well, that's tape. That's just the tape. So. Did All right. you cut those with like an exacto knife or something? No, I don't. I never use an exacto knife. Okay. Everything, everything is done with scissors. So you so cut it out first and then peel over it, or? Yes. So here's here's one right here. I don't think you see, can you see these shapes that are pretty yeah, here? I can yeah. see them. Okay. Yeah. So why don't I do it? Why don't I do it? Oh, so you put it. I know. So I slice it. So I, it right on the back. Yeah, I, I just cut the tape and then stick it stick it on. Okay. 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 And, and then you put it on the top. So that's what yeah. you did to that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Let, yeah. Let me let me just. How do you cut the intricate tape shapes? I just very carefully. I just unravel it and cut. The I, shape of the tape. I can. I don't know. I I can do it. After a while, what do you mean the intricate shapes? Like there was a like a leaf. And oh well, let's say. After a while, you learn strategies. So first, you do. You'll cut a shape. Mm -hmm. That's not so intricate. By the way, I stick things on me all the time. So. And then you cut into. Uh -huh. um, so what you do is, let's say, you wanted that, so you. Cut that. Kind of chipping away at it. Cheek. You chip away at it exactly. Uh -huh. When you when you cut, it's often better to, to move the paper or the tape than like for example, I'm just getting stuck here. Um, often if you're doing a small thing, you know, you sort of move the paper. You know, you can kind of move uh, okay. the guy. And often, if you're going into a, a V, what you want to do is you don't want to take a curve, come at it from two different angles. Uh -huh. These are things you learn at, you know, if you, if you do a lot of cutting, after a while, you start to learn strategies for better cutting. Do you ever um, put tape on something like wax paper or parchment paper, draw on the tape, and then cut on the shapes, and then put the shapes onto another surface that can paint over them? Or is that too many steps? Okay. I, you guys start over again. <laughs> you, take, you take the tape and you put it on like a parchment or a wax paper. Okay. And draw on the tape, line drawing, uh -huh. and then cut it out. And then put it to a surface to then paint. Do you ever do that? Um, I, I, most of the time I sort of freehand cut, but occasionally there might be a very specific shape I want, and I, I will just draw on it. So I would just draw right on that and then just cut it, cut it out. So if I had something like this, I usually peel off a chunk that I think is big enough. You know? So you don't you don't ever cut this. You don't ever cut what it's on. Okay? You never cut what it's on. That's why when people say, oh, do you use a, an X-Acto blade? I go, no. I don't use an X-Acto blade because then it cut the substrate that it's on. The good thing about this is that I can peel this. Let's say I want to do a couple of leads using this Piece of tape. It's stuck on there. It's very tactile. So I cut, say, I take a chunk of this, and I say, okay, I'm going to cut a couple of leaves. So I'll just do a couple here. I'm just going to stick them on me until I do something. <laughs> Sometimes you have pieces that are big enough and you go, well, I'm going to just save that because I might want a tiny leaf. I'll just put it over there. Just stick it back on. You see what I mean? So you don't, you, know, you don't have to throw away that much. You can actually utilize a lot of these little scraps um, because someday you may just want that color and you just need a little bit. <laughs> so you use that. Um, and then... So you see, you just start building up, whatever. Um, and if you have like one of those 
white or light acrylic markers. You could just work directly, you know, on, on a dark surface, right? Um, so this is what I mean about it's, it's really versatile. But let me start painting. So let me get a little bit of paint out here. I brought lots of different colors. And, um, Are you using acrylic paint? Or yeah. Okay. Yep. Acrylic paint. I get a little burnt umber here. Sometimes when I do tapes, the reason I made a lot of tapes for you is that you might do some painting uh, tonight, but you're probably not going to be able to use them because they'll, you know, they take a little while to dry. Um, but I wanted you to sort of experience what it's like, what it's like to work on that surface because it, it, it is a little different than paper. I mean, it's it's a paper, but it's it's almost waxy. So sometimes it sticks and sometimes it doesn't. So uh, where's my brush? Brush water. Um, do you want to get closer? You guys are kind of far. Feel free to sit too. Yeah. One more zero. Oh, okay. So what I did was I I did strips. I did larger pieces, um, and the same thing with those for that you can that you can take. I did you know I, I wanted to do a wide variety, mm -hmm. and you you know obviously you don't have to take the entire thing. You can just mm -hmm. take um, you know just cut a piece off. Mm -hmm. So this yeah. is what. But this is what I wanted to tell you about this. This is what I love about it. Okay, so you've got this. I painted it white. Mm -hmm. I did not just use the white tape. I always put some type of paint on it. So oh, it's white tape, but I, put, I painted white on the white always. tape. Always? Okay. Yeah, I wanted it to be all mm -hmm. acrylic. Okay. Um, and, it's, and then I painted you know, mm -hmm. all those stripes. But if you cut this way, mm -hmm. You're gonna get you the have this amazing... Yeah. Right? Little teeny stripes. Why? It's so yeah. cool. I mean, like, yeah. you have so much fun yeah. when you can get all these really amazing, you know, you start to cut something like that, mm -hmm. and you've got all, you have a line that has a quality that, you know, would be very hard to get mm -hmm. any other way. Mm -hmm. So that's why, that's why I love using, yeah. the, using the tape. So, um, let's say, let me see what this is kind of do. So, let's say I decide. I'm just gonna, and I'm just, I just play around when I do this. So let's say I decide to do that. I'm not even gonna clean my brush. Mm -hmm. But Emory, you said that you put white, white. Oh no, no, that was only because I wanted it to be white. Oh, okay. All, all right. right. I just, once wait, you're not putting white on this one. No. Yeah. Or no. you haven't put white on this one. That's why I was just curious. So I'm just going to mm -hmm. do. I love gradations. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. colors that mm -hmm. one yeah. color that sort of morphs mm -hmm. into another color. Mm -hmm. So, mm, beautiful. So there's there's a tape right there. I go, well, good enough. <laughs> that'll be that'll be useful. Um, if I mm -hmm. occasionally, occasionally I, I try to actually do something like I do a lot of trees. I like to try. I really love gnarly trees, and my large scale work is often of trees and of course tree bark, which is you know really gritty and gorgeous. Um, so what I often would do would be paint, you know, paint a brown, let it dry, then take, you know, I only brought these brushes, but you know, most artists have a variety of brushes. I would take like a really bristly brush, mm -hmm. just put a little bit on it, and then just kind of scratch, mm -hmm. you know, other, other darker colors or lighter colors on it. And so you would have a really, um, Something that would be really suitable for for bark, mm -hmm. so you can you know you can do things with something specific in mind too. Um, I just want to show you what happens when you kind of work if you put oh, okay. water on it first. I was going to ask you about water. Yeah, um, you know you can end up with. Mm. Do you see what I mean? It, mm -hmm. It'll end up being a very mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. kind of oh, yeah. quality. Wow. Yeah. Here's so I'm just going to just lightly do that. Now, I can let that dry. I can't do it tonight because it will take too long. But if you let that dry, then you could do a wash of another color on it. So picture that and then a wash of another light, let's say green. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you could, you know, and, and that's the nice thing about acrylic is, you know, it doesn't make that long. So in a couple of hours, I could, I could wash another color on top of that. Um, you can also... Could you use a hair dryer on it? I never do. Mm -hmm. I usually it's just, just, I'm usually just doing so many of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, 
Um, you can also, let's see, I just want to get something. I'm just going to put something down because I want to uh, scratch into it. Yeah. So let me see. Like, there's always random things. There's always random things. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. You could take your rings yeah. off and then wash them out later. Yeah. That could make an interesting design. Thanks for joining us for the co creative sessions. Stay tuned for upcoming sessions and view previous sessions in the series by visiting the Co Creative Center's events page at cocreativenb.org. The Co Creative Sessions is funded by Mass Development TDI and the Bar Foundation as part of the TDI Creative Cities Initiative to boost arts based economic development. This program is also supported in part by a grant from the New Bedford and Dartmouth Local Cultural Councils, local agencies which are supported by the Mass Cultural Council, a state agency. We look forward to seeing you at the next Co-Creative Session.